Hello, this is Alex from Inductor and we are continuing our tutorials covering the new feature user-defined beam reinforcement in SLB software. In the previous video we performed automatic beam design, converted design reinforcement into user-defined and performed beam reinforcement optimization. In this video I will show how to add existing beam reinforcement from scratch, perform the necessary checks and again resolve all potential failures and detailing warnings. So let's pick up from where we left in the previous video. We keep working on the same two span beam and as we are going to add reinforcement from scratch first thing we need to do is to delete all previously added uh, user-defined reinforcement. This can be easily done if we navigate to user reinforcement tab, click the delete button and select delete all option. This will clear all user defined reinforcement and all uh, user reinforcement results. Alright, so let's imagine that the existing reinforcement of that beam is 2 and 12s at the bottom along the entire beam, 2 and 12s at, at, at the top and uh, say uh, 2 legs of N12 uh, at 300 spacing ties. Let's add that. User reinforcement tab, add. Label has to be unique for each interval, so we will input bottom for bottom reinforcement, 2 and 12s at 44 millimeters effective cover. Click add. Uh, we can keep adding reinforcement top, 2 and 12s at 44 millimeters effective cover and ties. Two legs of N12 at 300 spacing. Add. So, as you can see, the process of adding reinforcement to the beam is actually really simple. Now we can run the check. After this is done, uh, let's uh, click on the envelope and have a look at the results. As we can see, various sections of the beam fail for many reasons. So generally the beam has the following failures. Positive bending failure, negative bending, shear, torsion and additional tension force uh, caused by shear and torsion in the flexural compression side at the top and bottom of the section. If we click uh, on the particular section, then we can also see why this particular section fails. For example, that section fails for positive bending. A uh, section closer to the support will also fail for shear and torsion. Uh, failures are indicated by red labels in the top left corner of the view, by red circles in the location of the section, in the model view, and also the corresponding row in the results table will be colored red. Let's now focus on modifying that reinforcement and on providing the necessary capacity. Let's start with bottom reinforcement and positive bending. For simplicity I will, uh, I will turn the visibility of top reinforcement and ties off so we can only focus on bottom reinforcement. By exploring the design results table and looking at the safety factors for positive bending, safety factor for bottom tension, um, we can make a conclusion that governing load combination for majority of the section is combination number one and the safety factor for this first span, for the left span, is 0.31 Whereas for the second span, again, the governing low combination is number one and the safety factor is a bit larger, 0.54. So what we can do, we can focus specifically on low combination one, plot our design moment and plot our bending capacity. I would like to stop here for a minute and explain in more detail why we do not produce envelope capacities for user-defined steel. 
As per item B of table 222 of AS3600, safety factor for bending capacity depends on neutral access parameter KUO, which is a function of the load combination. Also, as per clause 824, concrete shear capacity VUC depends on strain at mid height of concrete section epsilon X through the KV parameter. So, VUC is also a function of the load combination. Basically, the same reinforcement may provide different capacities for different low combinations, hence we cannot produce a single value for the envelope. We can only record the smallest safety factor and governing low combination, which we do, and this information is available from the results table when envelope is selected. Now, let's move on. Let's split our bottom reinforcement in two intervals, one for left span, another for right span. Select the interval, right click split. Again, this will delete the results as we have modified the reinforcement. Uh, let's adjust its, the, the interval's coordinates such that the interval on the right uh, runs along the right span and interval on the left runs along the left span. And to start with, let's, uh, for example, change the diameter to and 16. As we know from the previous video, this can be done in various ways. Uh, I will use properties grid for that purpose. Select the interval, change the in diameter to and 16. Same for the second span. Rerun the capacity. Alright, so we are nearly missing on the capacity for the second span. Still, we got about like 50%. We have about 50% less than needed in the first span. Uh, by looking at safety factors, uh, we can say, okay, our second span has the safety factor of 0.95. First span is about 0.54. So we still need to modify our reinforcement more. And again, let's increase the number of bars now. For example, we will have three bars, three and 16 in the second span, and four and 16s in the first span. And after the rerun in the capacity, we can see that our capacity line completely covers the design moment. Our positive bending failure is now gone. So we can say that we have provided enough positive capacity uh, for the for low combination one. If we switch the envelope back on, we can also say that even for the combination number two, uh, there is no positive bending failure as is not mentioned here uh, in the summary line for the entire beam. Let's now provide enough negative bending capacity, that means enough top reinforcement. Let's start with changing the diameter of top reinforcement to N16. Select the interval, go to the properties, change the bar diameter, rerun the capacity check. By exploring the results, we see that negative bending failure happens at the leftmost section of the beam and the safety factor for that is just 0.95, so again we nearly missed uh, on the capacity on the left support. However, the safety factor at the middle uh, of the beam above the cen center support is just 0.46. So we need to slightly increase the amount of reinforcement above the left support, uh, but significantly increase it above the center support. Uh, to resolve the negative bending failure on the left support, we can just add another bar. So let's say we've, we'll have three and 16s here. Update the capacity. Yes, the negative <coughs> bending failure has gone on the left support. And uh, to resolve the negative bending failure above the center support, let's add two additional bars, 
2 and 16s as a second layer. Click Add Button, give it a label, let's say Top Over Support, 2 and 16s at 80 millimeter effective cover. And we don't need those bars along the entire beam, so they can run from 5 meter coordinate till, say, 9.5 meters. Add, update capacities, and negative bending failures have been resolved too. Let's check the envelope. Our beam still fails for shear and torsion at certain sections. Again, looking at the design results table, we can evaluate uh, the safety factors. For example, our safety factors for shear, uh, there's just one section failing for shear, it's 99% um, capacity and it's right at the center support. So we may need a slightly smaller spacing for that section. So say we can go from 300 millimeter centers to 280. By the way, let's switch, off, switch the tie visibility on and top reinforcement off. So f to resolve that shear failure at the middle support, we may just reduce the spacing from 300 to 280. Rerun the capacity check. And yes, that's gone. So what's left is the torsion failure and uh, near the ends of the beam. Safety factors for torsion uh, are the lowest ones are around 0 0.57, 0 0.86, and the governing log combination is log combination 2. Um, if we focus on that log combination, we can actually plot the torsion capacity and torsion moments. And yes, we can confirm that our moments are larger than capacities at those sections. So torsion moment is 69.5, whereas the capacity, factored capacity is 39.7. Uh, so what we can do, we can uh, use the smaller spacing, let's say 200 millimeter spacing, using the same tie uh, in the areas next to the support. So two meters from the support, from each support, we will have smaller spacing. So all in all, we will need three uh, intervals for ties. So let's just split that twice, one and two. And if we are going to edit multiple intervals, it's actually easier to use user reinforcement editor tool located on the user reinforcement tab. Let's click here and modify our ties. I'll say there will be ties on the left, which will run from 0 to 2 meters, 2 and 12s at 200. Then ties in the middle of the beam will run from 2 meters to 10 meters. 2 and 12 to 280, and then ties on the right side of the beam will run from 10 meter coordinate to 12 meter coordinate, 2 and 12 at 200. Click OK, rerun the capacity check. OK, so this spacing is enough to resolve the torsional failure on the right support, but not enough to resolve it on the left support. We still got 0.8 capacity. So what we can do, we can, we can keep keep reducing the spacing. And let's go with uh, probably, let's go with, with 150. Yes, that's definitely enough. Uh, our beam has passed all the um, all, all strength and crack control checks. We click the, on the envelope just to make sure we have not missed anything. However, we still got several uh, detailing warnings. 
let's again focus on the particular log combination to get full report um, and see what's happening there. Overall is just one clause failing for the for the beam, which is torsional reinforcement longitudinal spacing. Maybe violated. Let's crawl to the bottom and look at the numbers. Uh, clause 833B fail torsion ties longitudinal spacing is equal to 280 millimeters in the middle of the beam whereas our maximum allowable spacing is 210.48 um, so we can we can just reduce the spacing for the the spacing of ties in the middle of the beam to let's say 200 millimeters let's rerun the capacity check We'll click on the envelope again to make sure that we have not missed anything. So as we can see, everything is green. Our beam has passed all the checks. Uh, there are no yellow circles or yellow rows in the results table indicating the detailing failures. So we can say that we have uh, actually passed all the checks and the input reinforcement satisfies all the requirements. This uh, concludes our series of tutorials. Um, thank you for watching.